What's up, beautiful people? It's Cinderella. Welcome to the channel. Today, we have this very interesting video, and it's titled Candice Owens' Response to Ben Shapiro. Also, I'm excited to check this out as there's no news about Candice Owens and Ben Shapiro's conflict that has been raging all over on the internet. So, yeah, I'm excited to hear what they've got to say on this one. Let's check it out. The internet was dominated yesterday by video of Ben Shapiro. Who you work with at the Daily Wire? Um, I think it's fair to say hmm. attacking you. Here's the video. I just want to get your reaction. Yes. Uh, the question is about Candace Owens. I think her behavior during this is disgraceful. Without a doubt. So maybe there's a point in the video wow. that explains what exactly you did wrong, how you were wrong. I, I haven't seen it. Um, but to call somebody, quote, absolutely disgraceful, particularly a coworker, seems like a pretty big step. What, and, and I really don't know the background here. What is that about? You know, there isn't much of a background. I saw the video when everybody else saw it when I woke up. Um, no one, he, no one warned you about it. Nobody warned me about it. I, I, it looks like maybe he didn't know he was being recorded. It looks yes. like it was some sort of a private event. I got no clarity on the issue that he was particularly speaking on. And in what was said, I also, I can't respond to it beyond what he's saying because it's just ad hominem attacks. I don't know. Yeah, because it's not, you know, we just. Let me ask this question. And I know what I'm asking. What would you do if your friend or colleague spoke so said some demeaning words about you on national tv or on um social media what would be your reaction or how would you react to that i would really love your honest contribution to that i mean everybody have got different opinion regarding this and everybody would react differently i don't think everybody will react the same but i would honestly love to hear from you based on the fact that it is your friend or your colleague and you know you've shared some vital information or some information about yourself to the person or both of you work closely or and most more than likely you have a disagreement on something and the person brought up some issues or some topics that you might have shared and to place it on social media and the likes i would love to know i know this year th there was no much information that was divulged here but i'm just sharing that asking that question in case you're put in this position or you're in this position how would you react to it but yeah let's go on. at how many attacks i don't know because yeah, it's not you know we disagree or yeah. i you know i i don't think she's correct or maybe she doesn't know what she's talking about it's absolutely mm -hmm. disgraceful yeah exactly and so i can't respond to it on a level of intellect because there there's nothing that he has expressed in that at least in that short clip that he fundamentally disagrees with in terms of what I said, but I will say that I'm not going to respond with the same ad hominem attacks. Yes. I don't think it helps further discussion. And it, if I, that was me that was caught on a video saying that about colleagues that I work with, I would be embarrassed. I would. So I think hmm. the video speaks more to Ben's character than it speaks to mine. Has he texted you to apologize or explain or anything? No, nothing. I haven't heard a single word. It just was sort of something that he said. And you know what? Wow. And I have many disagreements, so I don't think that that's particularly something that's interesting. Um, we disagreed on the COVID vaccine. We disagree yes. on Ukraine and Russia. He has taken virtually every stance that has been the opposite of mine on every issue uh, over the last five mm. years. So I don't think that that's particularly the COVID remarkable. Vaccine. Really, I didn't remember that. Yeah, he was pro the COVID vaccine. I was anti the vaccine. You know, we were all idiots for oh. not getting the vaccine. So that's totally fine. I, I am totally open to people having a difference in opinion. Right. I would hope that amongst colleagues, mm -hmm. that it would always be civil disagreement and I, I would never exactly i am open to p everybody having their opinion not because uh you would agree with what i said but because you have your opinion you have your thoughts of opinion so i mean the reason is because there are some stands that i would take that you will not like and there are some stands that i would take or take and you will not like and it does not mean that we have to exchange words on that you just because based on the current situation that is where i'm at and that is where you're at and we are allowed to have differences of opinion and still come on an agreement or come on a common ground to coexist while we still have differences of opinion i think people should respect that and move on fine rather than because this person does not agree with what i've said or what i believe in therefore i see this person as an enemy the world don't need more conflict than what we already have Whew. let's go on please
this agreement, and I, I would never in a private event stand on a table and talk badly about Ben. It's just I a little weird. It's a little weird. So he was on the left on those three biggest issues of our time, is what you're saying. He has converted his opinions. He's accepted responsibility. He said, you know, I was wrong about the vaccine. Oh, good. good uh, he is, you know, obviously pro pharma. His mom's a doctor. And oh. I say to people, I'm very aware of my perspectives on big pharma. And yes. I talk about it on my show openly. And I think that that's a tremendous credit to the Daily Wire that they allow a difference of opinions. But I would, I, as I said, hope that it would remain respectful. Yes. And yep. that you wouldn't throw your colleagues um, under the bus, yeah. so to speak. I think, that, I think, that, I think that's fair. And just, just for clarity, because I really don't know. Did, is he your boss? Is he... I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about uh, Ben's involvement. He's not hes not the CEO of the Daily Wire. He yes. is not making the day decisions of the Daily Wire. And I do want to make it very clear because people are like, how could you possibly save Daily Wire after this? I have a very good relationship with the co-CEOs of the Daily Wire. I, you know, Especially right now, the acting CEO is uh, Caleb Robinson. He's a wonderful person. He's worked very hard to be where he's at. We have a lot in common that we connect on. And so people don't get to see that, which is unfortunate. You know, Ben lives in Florida. He's not a part of the day-to-day -day movement of the Daily Wire. You know, the rest of uh, the hosts have their shows situated in Nashville. So we see each other every day. We talk. There's great camaraderie. Yes. And there's actually more agreement. There's actually a lot of people that are, as I describe myself, just pro-America first. And I think I've been that way consistently throughout my political mm. career. Whether people agree with it or not in different moments is up for debate. But there, I, I don't want that video to become a reflection of how the Daily Wire works and the Daily Wire operates because I have had a very good experience uh, with the CEOs and, you know, love Michael Knowles, love Matt Walsh, yeah. uh, Andrew Clavin. We all get along really great. Well, it certainly speaks well of the Daily Wire then. So it's not, I mean, a clip like that on the internet, oh, Candace Owens is out or something. That's yeah. not, doesn't sound like that's what it means. Yeah, no, it's a, you know, it's it's a small group of people. We see each other every day. Right. Brett Cooper is another one who, who just joined about two years ago. She's great. She's up and coming. And there's a lot of stuff that we're working on. And, I, and that's why I think this video is even more unfortunate because people see him as a figurehead, rightfully so, mm. of the Daily Wire. And it allows people to, you know, speak energy into the Daily Wire that isn't necessarily there because he's not. Wow. Prior to this, I did not know that um, Ben is not um, a, the Daily Wire CEO because the way with the way he goes out with everything before, I actually thought he is the CEO or the likes and all. But it's interesting to know his position on this. But all the same, I don't whether whether CEO or whatever position is held, I don't. I'm not a firm believer of one e embarrassing or talking bad or saying something negatively about their colleagues but based on the fact that this is person this is somebody you work with and the likes if you have a disagreement it's best to just ga gather or call or call the person and say oh this is where you're wrong or this is your stance and this is my stance and i don't agree with what your what your stance is but um you can share your thoughts of opinion without making it look like you're forcing your opinion on somebody <sighs> what people should know is people can agree to disagree without forcing their thoughts of opinion on other people but yeah let's go on really wire that isn't necessarily there because he's not there on a day to day basis. okay that's very interesting so we, it, it, we can take three steps back and give us the context for this debate how are you on different sides of it when I, mean, no. I haven't heard you endorsing hamas <laughs> but, you know, no well I have not endorsed him uh. in any way, and yet people have interpreted things that I say, or actually rather things that I don't say. It's becoming very much uh -huh. reminiscent to me, and why I have used my platform to say this, of Black Lives Matter, huh. where if you don't say anything, yes. say silence is violence. If you say something, and it's even-handed and it's nuanced, which is to say, you know, during the times of Black Lives Matter, you might say, I don't support police brutality. Who no. does? I don't support racism. Who does? But also, I think that police are a crucial part of every... Uh, city. Yes, we have of policing in cities, so these calls to defund the police are immoral and wrong, and are going to lead mm -hmm. to more black deaths. People didn't want that nuance when Black Lives. Following George Floyd, there was no nuance. You had to explicitly say defund the police. Um, you had to post a black square. If you didn't post a black square on Instagram, by the way, specifically on the platform of Instagram, and you maybe were busy that day, maybe you were in another country, you know, maybe you just didn't log on to Instagram, you were accused of being yeah. racist. I'm seeing a lot of that behavior right now when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, a, a conflict that I have seen every single person, including myself, condemn what happened on October mm -hmm. 7th, I have, because who wouldn't condemn exactly. it? Exactly. It's obvious. Right. Who would not condemn innocent Israelis dying? But if you then say that it is also sad when an innocent Palestinian child dies, suddenly 
this is pro Hamas or you need to say, even when you're talking about how sad it is that a child dies, you need to button that statement by saying, but that child was a human shield. That's not going to be my response. Um, first off, as a mother, that's not going to be my response as somebody who is about to, do, to give birth when I see these images of children yes. involved on both sides of the conflict. I have pointed to the, the people that are mocking dead Israeli children and said that they are horrific. I am even keel on this matter. And yet people think that you need to be extreme. So people that have become more radical and extreme are perceiving uh. a moderate stance as not enough. And you, I was about to say, you don't, people can disagree with you or, yeah. or whatever, but you certainly don't seem radical on this <laughs> Definitively not radical. Um, my stance has not changed in terms of whether or not America should be involved in this conflict. Whether we were talking about Afghanistan, my comments have been clear. They've been documented for years. Whether we are talking about Ukraine and Russia, my comments mm. have been clear and they have been documented. I mean, you can go back to me even talking about NATO expansion before things erupted between Russia and Ukraine yeah. and, and having a meaningful discussion about how much expansion is too much expansion. How would we feel if we had troops on our border? These are things that should be allowed in an academic yeah. discussion. You should be able to sit on stage and should be able to debate these ideas without using odd exactly. attacks to say that you're a pro-Putin puppet or you're pro-terrorism, even in the aftermath of 9-11, something that we all remember as part of my childhood. I think I was in seventh grade at the time and I'm born in the New York City area. So this was a very big deal. If a person the day after 9-11 wanted to debate the Patriot Act, it's not fair to call them terrorists. Mm -hmm. No. Actually, they would have been proven right in the long run that act we gave up a lot of our freedoms. And I think there was only one congressman, a Republican, that was against the, uh, the Patriot Act at that time. So it's important, actually, when you start making decisions in a highly emotional time that people sit down and have these academic debates. And there are people that are saying, no, it doesn't matter because people are dead, that you need to just choose a side and that needs to be it. It needs to become mm. tribal. Th there's also, I can't help but notice that I, your views reflect mine, I would say pretty much. I'm, I'm an American. I was horrified by what happened on October 7th. It was pretty strange. Um, I don't really understand how it happened, but innocents died and that's awful. Yeah. And I feel so sorry for these mm. people who um, we were killed. However, there's an emotional response that is disproportionate, I think, on the part of some commentators. I mean, our country is being invaded right now by millions of young men whose identities we don't know, probably don't even like America, and they're now living here. Over 100,000 Americans die every year of fentanyl. I've known a couple. Those are real yeah. tragedies. I've never seen anything like the emotion from any commentator around those tragedies as I'm watching about a foreign tragedy. I think that's odd. Oh my goodness. As in regards to this, I think lots of people should respect people's opinion, especially if somebody have decided, oh, they don't want to be involved in this conflict, it's perfectly fine. If you've chosen a side and somebody else has chosen another side, people should run with it rather than you expecting or waiting that people should pick a side or support the exact same side that you're in or you're supporting. People have reasons why they are supporting the particular side. And so also people have got reasons why they've decided not to support the side you're in or people have decided or people have got reasons why they don't want to be in any side of the party they want to stay neutral and people should respect that because i i mean not everybody wants to get involved in the conflict and also there's a reason or there are reasons why people don't want to get involved in the conflict and people should not make it more like a do or die affair like it's either you support um this side of the party or it's either you say something about the side of the party or you are an enemy to this person or you are you're my enemy and the likes and i've said it before that lots of people because of this people are gonna lose family members friends and loved ones and the likes because they will be expecting one person to pick another side or one person to pick a side and the minute the person is not even saying anything regarding that then they've either lost respect for the person or they've seen the person as enemy and the likes and the fallout and all of that which does not even make sense it doesn't allow people to have their views of opinion and respect it that would be just fine but yeah, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below. What are your thoughts about this so far? What are your thoughts about Ben Shapiro and um, Candace Owens conflict? I really love your honest contribution to this. Who are you supporting? Who do you think is in the right? Or do you think um, they should come on a common ground to have a debate, to have a 
discussion about this because if you'd ask me i would love them to have a discussion or have a debate to hear their opinions and to hear from both parties or both sides of the party because this is something that can be settled amicably without raging in the on the internet with um people talking left and right and all of that people they can just have a debate and air their differences of opinion and move on fine and settle the conflict but yeah let me know where your thoughts are in the comment down below you can share all the useful information you think might be really helpful make sure to like comment and subscribe and all of that interesting stuff and until next time see you in the next video